welcome back to the channel. It's Lauren. Thank you so much for watching. Today is Sunday, which means we have a fragrance video. It's amateur scent hour here on the channel back again. And today I have a little bit of a different video than what I've done so far. Today I wanted to talk about Glossier U. If you're someone who knows and loves the iconic Glossier U scent, it's kind of this no perfume perfume. Sam calls these types of fragrances Emperor's New Clothes perfume because sometimes you can smell them, sometimes you can't. They're usually really musk heavy a little bit powdery. Anyway, if you like this scent, I wanted to give you some potential suggestions. Now, some of these will be closer to Glossier U, meaning that they're kind of could be considered duped. Like if you have one, you have the others and they're gonna be at different price points. So you have that to consider as well. But I just thought we could talk about some that are similar. But then I also do have ones that kind of are branching out. And I kind of thought of this video as like, this is the sun. And then I have all these kind of orbiting perfumes. And like the farther away we get from Glossier U, the more different they are is how I thought of it. So I kind of have three different rings here. I have like very similar Glossier style perfumes. Then I have like, a an outer ring that's kind of similar, but a few things here or there that may make you like it or not. And then I have this outer third ring, which is a little bit more adventurous, a little bit more going on. And if you want something like Glossier U, but you're ready to branch out, I don't know, I thought it would be helpful anyway. And I sometimes don't know where to start with perfumes or with fragrance, like what would I like? I don't know. And I'm on this scent journey. Some of you guys are on this scent journey as well. So I thought Glossier U and these kind of like musky scents are definitely ones that I enjoy. And so when I recognize them, I kind of just started a list and I have quite a few perfumes to share with you. So I want to get into it. I'm going to have notes on the screen as I talk because some of these are like, seriously, you get whiffs sometimes, sometimes you aren't blessed with a whiff. You know what I mean? <laughs> You're like, wait, I know there's something here. Please let me smell it. And sometimes it just doesn't want to present itself. Um, but yeah, let's just get into it. We can talk more. We will talk more because I talk a lot. So let's start off with Glossier U. This retails for 60 bucks on Glossier's website. I really enjoy this fragrance. This is one that definitely goes in and out of when I can smell it. Sometimes I can smell it so much and I love it. Other times I'm like literally spraying alcohol and nothing else on me, can't smell anything. I'm getting a little bit here, but on Fragrantica, this has like three notes. It's like powdery notes, iris, and musk. Like it is powdery. It is like a little bit floral and it definitely has those powdery notes and that musk in there. I really love these scents as kind of signature, toned down, just a very chill sense where you're not going to really offend anyone or bother anyone. They're not projecting a ton, but if you hug someone and they like this, they're gonna be like, oh my gosh, you smell so good. I find a lot of the times with scents like these that they really do cling to my clothes well. So I find if I wear the same shirt or if I'm wearing a scarf or a jacket or something like that, when I'm putting it on the next day after I've worn something like this, I really can smell it and I'm like into it. I'm like, so I'm like, oh my gosh, I smelled so good. More should have happened for me yesterday for how good I smelled. <laughs> anyway, it's a really great scent, but again, I don't wanna mislead you. It is quite subtle still, like it's there when you smell it, but otherwise, if maybe you're not getting a whiff of it, you might not smell much, and if you do, it still can be quite subtle. Okay, so that's Glossier U. Now let's talk about some other fragrances that I feel like are really closely orbiting right next to Glossier U, okay? First, I wanna talk about Le Labo's Another 13. This is another one that's very musky, very kind of powdery, sometimes you can smell it sometimes you can't I'm telling you these are all like so similar in scent there's gonna be slight differences I feel like with another 13 and a couple others like if you're trying to have a very minimal collection you don't need all of these but the main accords on this are musky amber woody animalic floral powdery fruity and then it says for the notes in here iso e super which is like a molecule scent ambergris musk ambrette or musk mallow amyl salicylate I think that's maybe how you say it and pear I mean you barely pick up on the pear that's really the only thing that's going to be giving any type of sweetness or like really like a thing a thing you can like tangibly touch type thing. It's just a nice musky, again, kind of powdery, no real sweetness coming off of it. It's just a nice like skin scent, very similar to Glossier U. I mean, Glossier U doesn't have the ISO E super. So I do think that's a little bit different. And I find that note is kind of um, fresh. I don't know. It's like this freshness about it. It's really nice. I, I love that. We'll get into that in a second, but I really enjoy this one. Price difference is very different though. Obviously with Le Labo, it's quite expensive. So there's that if you really 
like that one, maybe try Glossier U. And that can be said for all of these. Like if you don't have Glossier U, but you have other ones on here, these all could kind of be a family tree of sorts where they're all kind of connected in some universe that maybe you might like it. Okay, next, this is the one that Sam specifically is saying that this is the um, Emperor's New Clothes perfume because he never can smell it. This is from Juliet Has a Gun and this is the Nada perfume. So sometimes you smell it, sometimes you don't. When you're trying to smell it, I promise you, it's like, please let me smell it. You don't, but then randomly, you'll just be like hanging out, get a whiff and like, what is that? And it's like, it's this, it is something. I really love scents like this for every day. And I do feel like though on my scent journey, I enjoy these scents, I definitely want them. And I think they're great as like enhancer scents as well, kind of as base notes for you to then build on top of. Cause I love how this dries down and how it adds and kind of sticks on your skin throughout the day. But I've definitely been branching out into a lot of other categories. I've been going a little more complex. I've been liking something a little sweet. I'm like, who even am I? So this is another one. Again, if you have Glossier U, I don't think you necessarily need this one. If you have this one, you might not need Glossier U. The main accords on Fragrantica are Amber and Musky. I'm telling you, Amber and Musk are, they're right next to each other. Most of the fragrances here are gonna be kind of heavy in that. And the only things that it mentions in the notes is Amber Ambroxan and Cetalox, you know the ones. But Ambroxan, again, is another one of those scents that's really gonna give you that warmth. There's something about Ambroxan that really makes me like, makes me come back to it over and over. I just, I really love fragrances that tend to have that in the base notes. It really pushes a fragrance over the edge for me to enjoy. All right, moving on. Another very similar fragrance, you guys. Dupes on dupes over here. This is Molecule 01 from Eccentric Molecules. If you've been on my channel, you guys already know my love for this. This is my third bottle, I think, of this. This is Sam's probably his favorite fragrance. So for talking about mm, Emperor's New Clothes fragrances, he sure does love them, okay? <laughs> At least in Molecule. This is like, I think a one note fragrance type thing. And I think the whole point of this is that it's basically the ISO E Super. Like that's what this is. That scent is so good. Like I know it's like the one thing I'm like, <laughs> I don't care, it's so freaking good. This is a great one for layering as well and kind of spraying on first and then adding whatever on top. Definitely I suggest playing around with layering with this. The main accords, woody, musky, Amber Animalic. This scent reminds me of Sam and me. I, we both used to wear this all the time and we would just be like, oh my God, you smell so good. Oh my God, you smell so good. <laughs> We were very into it. Again, I've talked about it a lot on my channel over the years because it's been a favorite for a very long time. I wanted to mention another dupe. This is like literally an exact dupe. I feel like for Molecule. This is from Ellis Brooklyn and it's the same thing. This is called Iso Gamma Super. So, hmm, can you guess what's in this? <laughs> this one feels a little bit more maybe punchy, but I'm sure I'm just making that up because at this point I'm telling you my nose is like, can you smell something actual? Anyway, the main accords in here are woody, amber, aromatic, earthy and animalic. And then it says that there's vetiver, cedar, and ambergris in here. I do think this is a little woody. Um, it's really nice. And this retails, I think for like a hundred bucks. And I think Molecule full retail retails for like 140. So if you had one or the other, maybe going for this one would be a cheaper deal. But I think this is like a bigger bottle. So I don't know, you do the math on all the ounces and the milliliters and whatever. And I like the bottle on the Ellis Brooklyn a little bit more, but hey, I'm just saying. This is like the same thing and a great one for layering. I just have a little sample, but I just wanted to shout that one out again just trying to cover as much ground here with this video as possible now we're still kind of in this let's call this ring out here 1.5 i feel like these next three fragrances are kind of blending into that second ring they are very similar to these but they have a little bit more going on they're not quite like one noted you know like powder musk only. So um, I feel like they're like a step up. If you're like, okay, I don't want an exact dupe of Glossier U, I want something different, like enough to be different. I feel like these are enough to be different from Glossier U, but they're very close still. Okay, that all being said, this next one is Hermetica Source One. I bought a Hermetica um, sample pack and this one's really nice. It kind of was on its own. I think this is also kind of marketed with them as like an amplifier scent or something you can spray with other scents. And although this is is similar and close to these other ones I've already talked about and Glossier U. This has this like citrus note to it. It's a little bit fresher. There's something kind of green going on. The main accords on this are citrus, woody, amber, fresh, spicy, and aromatic. And then the notes that it mentions here are the bergamot, the woody notes, and amber. And I really feel like you're getting that citrus. That's the tiny difference in here. It's just like, uh, let's spray some bergamot on it. <laughs> That's what's going on here. But again, very simple, non-offensive. It's gonna stick to the skin in a similar way. Way. It still has that amber note in there, has some of those woodsy notes in it, 
It's really nice, a little bit fresher um, instead of like more powdery. Next on my list, another little sample here. This one is from Lake and Sky. This is 1111 and this is another one of those kind of no scent scents. Like it could be a signature scent if you don't want to be offensive, maybe like strong scents kind of bother you. All of these kind of could work for that, especially in the sense that I'm considering in ring one and ring two, if you're following my whole analogy going on in this video. This one I feel like is one of those no perfume perfumes, but it's a little bit cleaner to me than like citrusy or woodsy. There's something about it that's a little bit more fresh, not too like warm cotton sheets, but definitely more leaning that way. Like if we're a wobble guy, we're wobbling toward clean, you know? Sometimes I don't know if it makes sense in these videos, you guys, but I hope that you're here with me and understanding. This scent is not on Fragrantica, unfortunately, but I'm gonna read you from the website. It says on here, combines a musky blend of white ambers. I'm telling you, musk, ambers, it's there. I wasn't lying. It has a similar scent profile, but it also says on here that it's a bold unisex blend inspired by the teachings of yoga and the color white. It is a sheer, clean, and uplifting fragrance with an ethereal vibe. Think Nicole Kidman and Nine Perfect Strangers, you know? It says the scent captures the feel of skin after emerging from the ocean, mixed with the crisp texture and transparency. I told you, something kind of fresh. Yeah, a little bit beachy, but no coconut, no sunscreen. It's not like that. It's just like the tiniest bit of salt air mixed with those muskies. It's very nice. It's a very nice one, especially again, if you like Glossier U. I feel like this would be different enough to potentially have both if you don't want to be like super minimalistic with your perfumes, but it's still in a very similar vein. Okay, next is so good. This one's definitely different. Okay, it has the most kind of juice going on so far. It's still tame, don't get me wrong, but my nose is like, oh, something real. Mm. This is another sample. This one's definitely on my list to get, but baby, it's pricey. You're definitely gonna pay if you want this fragrance. This is Initio's Musk Therapy. Ooh, it is so good. It is musky and citrusy. It's kind of like this sweet and tangy musk. That's so good. It's still very soft. It's still gonna be a great one where, you know, you could wear it a lot. I don't think it's gonna bother you if you're sensitive to smells. It's not like overpowering in that way, but you can smell it. It's not like one of those ones that's like, is it real? Is it a ghost? I don't know. No, this is there. The moment I smelled this, I was like, ooh, I like that. I want that. And then I saw the price point and was like, $300, I think it's like two something, high twos if not threes. I was like, oh my gosh, why? Why do I have to have that type of taste? <laughs> no, but definitely I'm sad that this is as expensive as it is. So it says on here, main accords, citrus, floral, musky, fruity, powdery, woody, green, aromatic, fresh, spicy. And then the notes on here are white musk, musk, black currant, and you definitely get that black currant. And I think that's where that kind of like, to me, what comes across on my nose, black currant always kind of comes off a little tangy. Like it's a sweet fruit, but there's something kind of like, ooh, hey. I don't know, like a little, little wakens me up. I like it. Then there's bergamot, mandarin orange, white sandalwood, magnolia, and hedonine. I don't know how to say that. It looks like a flower though. It is like kind of white florals. It has that tiny bit of fruit, that tiny bit of citrus, but there's still that underbase of musk, a little bit of that sandalwood, but it's not very creamy. It still feels very fresh, very clean, not too heavy. You know, it's still kind of light in the air. I do want to note with this one, I picked this up, Sam didn't quite pick this up, but I've heard people say that sometimes musks can come across a little like, um, sweaty, like a little sweaty, like a little body odor. And I just went on about how I love this. So I don't know what that says about me. Either you're going to be like, what are you talking about? Or like, who are you? Why do you like it then? But there is something about this that I do pick up a little bit of that where it's like a fresh underarm. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know how to explain it. I like it though, and it's there. So I'm just saying that this already, I feel like at the price point, definitely test it and all of that. But I don't know, let me know if you know what I'm talking about. There's something just kind of like sweet sour and that sourness feels like it's been on the body a little bit and not in a bad way. It's like, oh, it's my husband. I like that, you know? I don't know. I like it. It's nice. It's definitely unisex. All of these are very unisex. Like they don't really go one way or the other. Anyone could wear these. Anyone can wear anything, but you know what I mean. All right, moving on from that one. Next, another sample. I haven't bought all of these, you guys. And some of these I don't think I would buy, but I wanted to shout them out for anyone who might have them to bust them out or who might have one of these to try other ones. This one is Hanami from Fleur. The main accords on this are woody, powdery, and warm spicy. And I think that's the biggest difference in this one. You're definitely, I definitely pick up on that warm spicy. There's 
almost like an incense to it. It kind of almost comes across as patchouli, but I don't know if that's in here. Let me see, because there's only sandalwood given as a note on Fragrantica, and sometimes Fragrantica, I'm like, what are you guys talking about? There's no patchouli, which I think it might just be the vetiver and that spicy whatever's coming off, but the top notes on this are fig and bergamot. I really don't pick up that much fig. I do get a little bit of that, that citrus. The heart is hazelnut, white florals, and then the base notes are sandalwood, vetiver, and musk, and I feel like the sandalwood in here is coming off also a bit spicy, almost like how it is in Santal 33 where it's a little bit punchy, and again with that vetiver, I think that's definitely coming through. There's a little bit of warmth too, and like the hazelnut mixing in, and then musky, so this one's a little bit different. Definitely not something that would be too similar to Glossier U, but definitely something that lives in the same world, you know? So that's an option potentially, if that like warm spicy, that's like the fall version of Glossier U, honestly. <laughs> Ooh, next we're getting into some like scents. Like, <laughs> I'm so excited to talk about these ones. This is like if I were at the perfume counter and I was tincturing up and like figuring out what you might like, these are some of the ones I would suggest for more actual fragrances. So first is Leith from Ulrich Lang. I've really been enjoying a lot of the different scents I've been trying from this house. And this one's uh, a bit sweeter. It's definitely on that powdery side. I feel like it's similar to Glossier U in the powderiness and kind of that musk but it does have sweetness added. So not a lot, it's not overpowering or anything like that. Whereas I don't really pick up anything sweet from Glossier U. I honestly get more of the scent of Glossier U from the hand cream that's in the similar scent than I actually do from the perfume. I'll put the main accords here, but the top ones are woody, musky, amber, and powdery. And then there's that vanilla coming through, kind of softening it, adding some sweetness. I really like this scent. I actually got to sample this because I've been trying a bunch of different subscription services because I'm over here like hungry hungry for scents, baby. I want to like smell everything. I want to like, you know, get some like curated little samples and all the stuff. And this one came through Olfactive. I'll put it down below. Um, I've really been enjoying that one actually. And this came in October's in the female section and it's so good. I think this is super unisex though. I don't think it has to be for just women. The top notes on this are bergamot and lavender. I definitely smell that lavender. It's so nice and soft and oh, it's just so good. The middle notes are cashmere wood, cedar, water lily. Oh, there's something kind of just like warm warm, a little bit creamy, but not too much, but that's also coming from the base notes of tonka bean and vanilla. There's amber and musk. It's just powdery in the best way little bit warm, not too much, still not overpowering. I love that it has that tiny bit of sweetness in it. I definitely think if you like Glossier U and you don't mind something with a little bit of vanilla in it, a little bit of tonka bean, try this one out. I really think you might like this one and I love that this is like an actual standalone fragrance, you know, so where it has just like a few more notes and isn't so simple. So really, really love that one. I'm intending on buying the full bottle. That's the really cool thing about the Olfactive is that the samples that they send out for that month, you get 20% off. So I think I'm gonna pick that bottle up. That's how much I liked it. Next is a newer one to me. This is from, oh, don't make me say it. This is You or Someone Like You and I'm gonna butcher it. So please be nice to me. I don't feel like I hear people say this name that much. So <laughs> I haven't picked it up yet, but a Cat Lieb d'Orange. Let's just say that. But this is a little bit different, still kind of on that clean and like lighter type note. But this one has more of like an herbalness, something a little bit more green to it. It's still nice and light, really no sweetness, but it has like some mint to it, which I think is really nice. I think this is really similar also to Jo Malone's Blackberry and Bay. If you like that, definitely give this one a sniff. It's different enough, but there's something about these two that is, is very similar to me. And I think if you like that one, you will like this, but there's definitely a green note coming off, like leaves of something. Really, really like it. The main accords on this, green is the top, aromatic, citrus, fresh, spicy. A little bit of spice in there, I agree. I agree that that's also true. <laughs> top notes, mint, grapefruit, bergamot, anise. I don't feel like you pick up too much of the anise because sometimes that can come across a little licorice-y, but I don't get that too much in here. The middle notes are green notes, cassis, rose, and hedonine. Ketoin, maybe that's how you say it. And then white musk. So really the most similar note here is that musky note. I just think it's so fresh and kind of clean, but not in a soapy way, not in like what I feel like is kind of headache inducing way. I really like this. I love a green scent. I love like a green fig scent. This isn't fig, but mm, it's good. I love that mint too. Definitely interesting, a little bit different. And again, if you like Joe Malone's Blackberry and Bay, you definitely should check that one out. Next, you guys, with this one included, we have five more to talk about. I know it's a long video. Drop on in, baby. Mm, this is one of my favorite ones here. Here. Uh, I feel like if you like Glossier U, my number one recommendation that's the most similar to it, that I feel like price point also makes
makes sense and all that, like this is the one I suggest. This is so, so good. This is from Caudalie. This is the Te de Vin, I think that's how you say it, fragrance. And it is the same as their hand cream. And you guys know I love that hand cream so much. The smell of it, I was like, please tell me they have a perfume. And they delivered. They do have a perfume and it smells exactly the same and it is so good. The hand cream in this is so good. If you don't want to get this, if you don't want to spend, I think this is like 40 bucks on the website. Maybe it's 60, maybe it's like similar to the Glossier U, but compared to some fragrances on this list and just in general, it's really quite affordable. It is so good, you guys. The musk in here really sticks to the clothing, sticks to your skin, sticks around. It's so good, but I can always smell this. Every time I can always smell this. It doesn't disappear. It doesn't come in wafts. It always is there. There's a grape note in here that I feel like gives it some sweetness. It's so good, you guys. Okay, top notes, white floral, musky, sweet, citrus, fruity, fresh, green, woody, mm, powdery at the end. So in the top notes, we have tea, African orange flower and jasmine, middle notes, grapes, neroli, and ginger. And then the base notes are musk, woodsy notes, and honey. This doesn't have any honey in it that's coming off too animalic or too like raw honey. It's just giving that sweetness again with the grapes. It's so good. There's like a freshness, a little bit of that greenness coming from the tea. And there is that white floral, but nothing too, too floral. It's so good because that musk kind of brings it down and doesn't make it too. To me, florals can get a little headache inducing as well. Like if they're too clean, floral like I can't stand it but this one's so good so well done I just love it and a lot of people love the smell of the hand cream that like when I use it I'll be like oh you can have some where they'll be like what is that smell a lot of people love this really really good one for a signature scent for a really like office appropriate type scent highly recommend it I probably should have started off with how I recommend it but this is probably the next one let me break both bottles at once <laughs> Okay, anyway, let's move on. Next we have by Rosie Jane and this is the scent Rosie. This is maybe should be back on like ring one cause it's a very light scent. The main accords are musky, powdery, and rose. So this one definitely comes off a bit more floral but there's a sweetness to it. So again, it's not too clean smelling. The rose in here is really nice. It's fresh, it's still really light. It's not like super sweet or like how people call like jammy. It's not cause it's like, you know, powdery and musky. It's very, very nice. It says the notes on here are musk, red rose, Moroccan rose, and vanilla. But I'm gonna go to their website because there has to be more than that. This also retails for a pretty affordable price at $65. It says on here that it is inspired by naked skin with notes of nude musk and a hint of sweet rose. So that's all you gotta know. Definitely very similar again to Glossier U, but add a little bit of rose to it, a tiny bit of sweetness. It says, feels like sleeping in your birthday suit, sheer and nude. And I definitely agree. It's very light though, again, um, um, and I do find that rose kind of picks up more and more and, and keeps it a little bit floral, but nothing too much. It still stays in the background, still stays close to your skin. And now we're getting into the last three and these are the ones that depart the most from this. So these are more like my takes on similar perfumes that aren't gonna be so similar that they'd be the same. Like they're not the same at all, but I would suggest these if you're trying to branch out and wanna like start going a little bit further from home base that is Glossier U. Okay, first for my most different scents, this is Skylar's Pink K. Canyon. And I picked this because it stays pretty light and still fresh, but it has a lot more going on. Mm. Oh, it's it's really nice. This is one of my favorites from Skylar. I actually recently did a whole video talking about Skylar scents, all of them, except for they're coming out with a new one, coconut one. I really want to get that. So I'll leave that link down below if you want to check it out. The notes on this, top notes, dewy lemon, grapefruit, and sage leaves. Middle notes, magnolia, lily of the valley, and tiara petals. And base notes are sheer amber, pink salt, cedar, and musk. So we have that still musky base. We have those woodsy notes, that amber in the bottom. We have those white florals going on. But then with that lemon, the grapefruit, the sage, there's something a little bit more happening. And I also really love the addition of that pink salt. You can pick up that salt note in here and that's really what differentiates this from just being another similar to Glossier U type scent. It really stands on its own while being similar. And I think that if you like Glossier U, you are wanting to try a Skylar scent and you wanna keep something that's fresh, really not sweet, um, unisex definitely. It's kind of beachy because of that salt in it, but there's nothing, again, sweet like coconut or sunscreeny or anything like that coming through. It is a very, very nice scent and I think you would enjoy it if you like Glossier U. Ooh, okay, next is one of my favorite ones. I got it, you guys, Erin Cedar Violet. The minute I smelled this, I knew I loved it. The minute I smelled it. Baby, it is so, so good. This is what it says. Cedar, violet, musk, powdery notes. Mmm, 
Mmm, so good. This tiny hint of sweetness, but it's still quite dry with that cedar. I really love this. This is what led me on to like violet and wood together. That's like my favorite combination. And also kind of let me in on like, I always thought of powdery as bad in a fragrance, like, oh, powdery is like mature. And then I realized powdery does not, no. Powdery can be delicious and amazing and I love it. Not delicious in, as in foodie, but just so good. <laughs> the main accords are ozonic, which I don't really know what that means. I'm trying to like smell more fragrances that have that so I can pick up like, what is that? Um, but woody, aquatic, amber, green, and powdery. The notes on here, they only mentioned three, so I'm gonna go to the website actually and see if they can give us a little bit more dirt on what's actually happening in here. It says on here the notes are nougat. <laughs> I say it like nougat, but with an M. Violet leaf, golden gardenia, jasmine, Australian album sandalwood, and Virginia cedarwood. That sandalwood is so good. It kind of ties, I feel like, the violet leaf into the woody notes and adds this tiny bit of creaminess to it as well. I highly suggest this one. It's definitely different though. Like, it definitely has stuff going on, but ooh, it is so good. And you definitely pick up on that musk and that powderiness is very similar. And I find, I don't know if I'm the same in this, you have to let me know what you guys think, but I find iris and violet sometimes pick up similarly to me. I don't know, there's something about them that when they're in fragrances, I kind of pick them up in a similar way. And last, I wanted to mention Byredo's Ball d'Afrique. This also in the dry down definitely gets a little powdery. And so I wanted to bring this up. As I'm talking now, I'm realizing this has a similar thing to musk therapy. And what I'm talking about, that like sweet sour. I don't know, something about the way the citrus plays in here. I think it's that citrus mixing with the musk that's also in here. Gives it this almost lived in quality, but it's still so fresh. It's so good. Bald Afrique is so good. Hence why I bought the bottle. This is the one I bought when I was with my mom and my brother at the perfume shop. Main accords on here, aromatic, citrus, woody, floral, fruity, and then it goes down into powdery and fresh spicy. The top notes are Almafi, lemon, taggots, I, maybe that's how you say it. Black currant, that black currant also, like I said, I think that's also giving that sweet, tangy, sour type note. There's bergamot, there's African orange flower. Then in the middle notes, you're getting that violet. This is where it's kind of connecting to violet cedar, getting a violet note in here. I definitely picked that up and the jasmine. There's also cyclamen. And then the base notes are vetiver, amber, musk, and cedarwood. So we have that kind of similar base running through these fragrances with that musk, the amber, the cedar. This one is just so, so nice. Nice. It's fresh and it but it has that like woodsy kind of base that isn't too heavy But it's definitely grounding this fragrance and not making it seem too fresh or too summery This is such a great Signature scent to me all year round type scent to me and I just as I'm making this video realized it has a similar Musky note or something going on with musk therapy, but in a good way in such a good way And that closes out my video you guys those are the fragrances no matter where you are if you want something similar if you want something similar but not exactly it or if you want something kind of branching off even more from Glossier U Those are kind of my top. I think there's like 15 cents here. So quite a few I'd love to know Do you have any scents that you think are similar to Glossier U? Maybe dupes for Glossier U or are more like the last three where they're in a similar realm But you know, you're kind of branching out a little bit more Let us know I'd love to know because this is a category of scent that I do really enjoy and so of course course I'd love to I'd love to know more let us know but other than that thank you guys so much for watching I hope you enjoyed the video and other than that I will see you in the next one bye guys